because you're weird. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Trish, tacos, tacos, tacos. I like the uh, taco chant. Are you going to add another song to your repertoire? I mean, is that really a song to just be like, tacos, ta that's just a way of life. That's not a song. That's just taco, how you do. Taco way of life. Yeah, it's just the taco way of life. Hey, guys, what's happening? It is Sunday. And that means it is, it is yes, and that means it's really Sunday. And this is Sunday Live Hall with LV Pink Panther, a.k.a. Victoria, a.k.a. Vicky, a.k.a. my fiance. Oh, you removed um, your ring. I did. How rude. I she never. takes it off never. every time she showers. I take Every it. time she goes in the pool. Because I don't want it to come off. Not that it's going to. And then as far as like the shower, it's like, I don't like doing like, you know, you put lotion on afterwards and then hair stuff. And it's like, I don't like it getting in my ring. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just, I like to take it off. I'm protecting it. It's because I love it so much. That's why. Okay. I don't see what the problem is. Nice try. Whatever. Whatever, man. Hit flip and mama. What's up? Hey everybody! Ooh, we yeah. have fifty people in the house. Oh my uh, goodness, that was fast. So I'm going to apologize right now because I might be a little slow today because we did go to a wine party mm -hmm. and um, I was good at drinking the water at first, and then <laughs> let's just say I feel a little rough today. This one was smart and stopped the drinking um, at an appropriate time, and she's totally fine. Totally fine. Totally fine. Me, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm too old for this because when I was younger, I could, you know, drink, party it up and be totally fine the next morning. Now it's like, I have like brain fog all day. I actually hate it. So I don't really do it very often um, as much. It's a little tough. I mean, we had, there were about 30 of us at our friend's house. My friend does this. This is our second year that she's done this, our friend, um, where, and she is uh, a chef. And she loves to show off her culinary skills, which we all appreciate. That is her gift to her friends mm -hmm. is that she pours a lot of herself into the things that she creates. So she made a wine pairing for every type of wine. And there were 30 of us there. And there were 30 of us that brought brought at least one bottle, sometimes more than one bottle. So I she ever brought three. Yeah. Of the same kind. But yeah, so yeah, yeah. she brought, uh, she made a, a tasting to go with every single type of wine. Uh, so there was the, the Proseccos and the Champagnes and then the Whites and the Sweets and the Rosés and then the Reds and the Ports. So much wine. <laughs> but she did take care of me, made me drink lots of water when we got home last night, mm -hmm. uh, put some macaroni and cheese in my body. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I'm actually doing a lot better than I would have otherwise. Yes. But man, it's like now that I'm older, like as I've gotten older, it's like it really affects like brain function. Yeah. And, I, that's and, why I I hate, and I actually don't like, like I hate feeling all foggy. That's why you will probably never see me drink too much. Yeah. I just don't like the, the day after. Yeah. I'm okay drinking water me and soda. Me neither. I like champagne. In fact, I love champagne. Yeah. And I love beer, but I just I never yeah. have, I never have too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I don't like the way it feels. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've, I think I've only, <laughs> I feel okay now. I'm just like a little slow. Uh, I think I've only seen you like really intoxicated like one time and you were just silly and cute. Yes. Just yeah. one time. Yeah. When we crashed that wedding party mm -hmm. with, uh, with, Lorna. with Lorna in Squim. Yeah. In that Squim. was the only time. Pretty much. And Lorna says two more sleeps and then she's Vegas bound. Yay. So we may get silly one night at the house. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. I think I'll, I'll probably take a break on that. So no, you're saying I'll, that now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Lauren is coming on Tuesday night and then she's going to be here for a whole week. And you know what that means, guys, that means Lorna is going to be pretty much on any of the shows that are going on while she's here. Uh, plus we're going to be doing uh, the, what did we call it? Home makeover, home takeover, mm -hmm. inventory takeover, inventory intervention, intervention, something like that with uh, reseller Dorothy. intervention. <laughs> yeah. So that should be really fun. Uh, Hip Flip and Mama says that we look absolutely ravishing. I don't know about that. I'm thinking I, I, I look a little tired, now. but thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm putting, you know, I'm putting on a show for the camera, but like this, just before I hit the button, I was like this. Yeah. Well, maybe not that bad, but. 
Yeah, she's, a she's a little rough, a little rough, a little rough. Uh, oh, Christiane wants some pink panther ears. Well, Christiane, I, I need to send you a t-shirt and I keep forgetting to do it. Uh, so I'm going to be sending you a bossom t-shirt and we will include some ears in that. So I'm saying yeah. it out loud because she's the one that's good at making message sure that, her to remind her or yeah. message me because I'll make sure it happens. Yeah, so she'll remind me now that she, she didn't even know I was supposed to send, I send you a t-shirt. So that's probably why it's taking so long because I didn't have her here telling me to do it. Cause she'll be like, uh, did you remember? Um, I'm kind remember? of a nag. Yeah, it's true. Cause she's like, sorry. When, yeah. Cause when you sent us those t-shirts, she's like, don't forget you need to thank her. So. <laughs> yep. What t-shirts are we wearing today? Uh, well, I have my, um, my cute little shirt that, uh, Katie thrifted for me with the golden mm -hmm, girls on mm -hmm. it. I know my friend Nadine yeah. would like that one. She's, she's a big golden girls yep. fan. And I have, I call, I call it the hipster hop cat because he's got like a hipster glasses and beanie and, but then like a gold chain. So I call him the hipster mm -hmm. hop cat, but somebody had mentioned, uh, I had him on like when I was doing, I did another video and somebody said it looked like I had a toddler in my lap. Yeah. Or it kind of does. Waldo. It kind of does look like I have some, somebody sitting in my lap <laughs> right now. Cause you can only see this part, but it's a kitty cat. Meow. Anyway freak you're a freak huh? you're a freak uh <gasps> anywho so we did a lot of thrifting well i did a lot of thrifting this week i went on thursday for 25 percent off day and i hit all five well i hit five of the sabers uh then went and had tacos with my friend derek and then i big forced, fish yeah big fish and then i forced him to go to the sixth and final sabers um in the vegas area so I actually went to all six in one day, which I hadn't done since we went last time with Lorna. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got, I was actually having a hard time figuring out what stuff to show because I got like a ton. She of did stuff. so much. Yes. Lots and lots of t-shirts. I found a lot of coats and jackets anyway. And then Friday we went yard sailing mm -hmm. and uh, that's all I have. I have stuff from my yard sale yeah. haul Friday. So but she found I, some cool I, stuff. I did. I found some cool stuff. Uh, I shopped the heck out of last week. So I had so much to show last week. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a little light this week. Yeah. But still yeah. Some good stuff. Yep. Yeah. But we did have some great souls. Yep. That's very true. We do. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little screen share with you guys. A little a bit sharing of the screens. Uh, <laughs> what do you think I'm funny? You yeah. think I'm funny sometimes. Okay. That's cool. I like it when you think I'm funny. All right. So I'm going to share the screen right now. And we'll start with one of your souls. I think you have one more than me uh, this week to share. So why don't you have at it? Yeah. So these I actually took a best offer on um, for $80. And these are just to show you that not everything has to be in pristine condition to sell. These are actually beat to heck. Um, but they were some racing shoes that are vintage that. We um, showed this in a haul. I showed these in a haul. They belonged to a regional. Um, semi-famous i guess kind of uh racer from from las vegas katie actually bought uh, a couple of other things from his estate and i picked these up for five dollars they i don't even think they're vintage i think they're 2010 or something i don't know but the, the date was further back um on another picture but they're kind of beat to crap um and they still sold for 80 bucks so yeah. Well, he raced in the eighties. Uh, his name was, uh, it was like Jimmy Sanderson. Yep. And I actually bought the fire suit, like the whole suit. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was race quip as well. And, uh, and I had just listed that this last week. Cause it had, because, because, because yeah, forever. because if there's, because if there's anything worse than pants in it's, my mind, it's one it piece. is a, uh, it is a basically a jumpsuit. Um, uh -huh. and, and so it took me forever to finally like take the pictures and then I finally made myself take pictures. I think while you were out of town. Yeah. So these are, they're pretty beat to heck, but I was pretty happy five bucks into 80 bucks. Yep. Um, I haven't shipped them yet. I actually sold them the other day. So I think they either sold Friday or Saturday, but they'll ship out tomorrow. Very cool. All right. So here is one. I oh, scroll down here. Um, Ooh, I liked that one when you got it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one that I actually thrifted back in. Oregon, I think I got it at the bins. Uh, 
although it could have just gotten at Goodwill. But anyway, and I had traded this to Cool Jacket Jim. Oh, I remember. Yep. Uh, I traded it to him. I don't remember what it was that uh, he gave me. He must have given me a couple of things, but he really wanted it. Um, and then he must have decided like he was never going to wear this hot pink jacket uh, as much as he coveted it when I had it listed. So he actually traded it back to me. Um, this, and I showed it to you guys along with a Tommy Hilfiger jacket. And uh, anyway, so this just sold for $107.99, but this is like from the 80s or 90s, um, made in the US. It's just a line that they had, Aqua Gear, uh, pretty, pretty sweet. Nice. And I'm stoked that I got so much for it. So cool beans. Next one for you. Uh, so I did show this one in one of our hauls. I actually picked this up at Buffalo Exchange. I'm forgetting how much I paid for it, but I think it was $20 might have been $25 mm -hmm. um, and it sold for uh, the 140 that you see there. Uh, this just sold yesterday. So it was pretty cool. A true patriot bought this. They, he must be a true patriot. Mm -hmm. Cause that's pretty magical. It is. It's something. All right. Yep. I remember when you got this, this is another one. I think so far everything are, they're all things that we've yep. shown in halls. So it's kind of cool to be able to go full circle and, and show what we actually sell them for. Drummer. Now that's a jacket. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's, <laughs> it's something. All right. And Allison, big drift thrift. I sourced so hard and got a lot of great stuff. I spent $25. What? I know what you're thinking. Yes. It was difficult to part with that much money. Yeah, Allison, you probably got about a thousand pieces. That's for her that sourcing $25. budget for the month is $25. She will turn that into $35,000. Yeah, oh, Chrissy Ann says you must have gotten a hundred items. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, okay, so these are um, some just some football cleats that I sourced at Ross and uh, sold them for 60 bucks. Um, the great thing about uh, the cleats, when you buy them at Ross, they're usually like, Maybe I pay at most $17 for them. Um, but usually, especially with this bigger size, I don't know exactly how much I paid for these, but I probably paid, um, let's see, you might even be able to see. Yeah, so they were priced at like 20 bucks, and then I probably paid uh, even less than that because I bought a lot of them when they're clearanced out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, Ross, great place to buy stuffs. And they have stars too. America. They do. Well, yeah, because it's like, you can see As it's Binky like says, America. America. You can see it's like camouflage. It's kind of an interesting camouflage pattern. Um, all right, next, next. This was actually uh, something that I picked up in Rhode Island when we were uh, vacationing and visiting my family and friends. I paid $10 for this. I actually took a best offer for it. It sold for 140. I think it showed there 179. I was like, yeah, I'll take the best offer. I probably could have held out and gotten a little more toward the holidays, but. I was pretty happy getting 140 on a $10 uh, investment on that. Very nice. Yeah, this is one I think you swooped in because I had a lot of times I won't bother to look at the vests. Yeah, and I and always do. I love vests. In. Yep. Red Hill Vintage, first time live. Just finished uh, binge watching all of the episodes. So We're binge worthy, apparently. Yeah. I think it's pretty really cool. See, and you always worry about oversaturation. Come on. Come on. Thanks, Red Hill. <laughs> All right. So uh, my next one, and now I did a post on Instagram about this. Um, this isn't even a vintage shirt. It's uh, it's a new one. You can see because it has the, um, it's it doesn't have a tag. It's just printed right on the material. So that's how you know for sure that it's a mm -hmm. current t-shirt. Um, but it is like the old school style. Um, and I actually got a best offer for this. Somebody offered... I feel like they offered twenty dollars, I think, and I came back with I think I came back with like thirty two, and they declined it. Um, and then literally within five minutes, somebody came and paid full price for it, thirty five ninety nine, and it was a different buyer. Um, and so my whole thing that I tell people is, you know, I don't have any proof of this, but I'm fairly certain that when there is an active offer or when something that you have gets mm -hmm. an offer on it, I think that the whole search algorithm somehow. 
I think, that, like, yeah, I think that the eBay search algorithms, I think they see it as a desired item because somebody made an offer. And so I do think that it, it makes it come up higher in somebody else's search because it has happened way too often for it to be coincidence. Like I it happens agree. all the time. It happens like somebody, to me all the time too. I'll have an outstanding offer and then someone else will swoop in and make another offer or they'll buy it full price. It happens all the time. Yeah, because it doesn't within show like anywhere. Day, within the yeah. same day. Because I think it used to show, it used to be that it would show when there was a, there was an open offer. Yeah, I don't know if it, uh, it doesn't. It does not do that anymore. But I'm guessing that like they had it as part of the algorithm. It's, it's always been part of the algorithm that it it does boost it in the search. So my whole thing with that is to tell you guys. I see posts every once in a while where people are you know people take things really personally sometimes. And I get it. It's your business. Um, you work really hard. Somebody comes in and they make an offer and it's crazy. And they offer you two dollars on a three hundred dollar item. Yeah, and people get really frustrated and they'll say you know uh, they get insulted. They take and it they, super personally. Sometimes they like they lose their cool and they'll like you know send a message back and try to like explain about how you know their kids need to eat and all this stuff and it's just and your knee jerk reaction is just a decline and probably right. smack that person upside the head but yeah. you know and so this is just to say that even even if somebody had offered me two dollars on this t-shirt are you going to take two dollars of course not but you should welcome any offer whether it is a good offer a low ball offer whatever welcome it because it is potentially boosting your stuff in the search always come back with uh, a counter offer. Um, I see it as like they're starting a conversation. And so somebody, let's say they offer me $2 on the shirt. I'm going to be like, okay, my counter offers 34 because it's me signaling them that uh, you got to get a little closer to my number if we're going to play ball. Now, if they come back and they say, okay, I'll give you $5, then I decline because I'm like, clearly they're not going to come anywhere close to it. Right. But there's been plenty of times where somebody has done that where I have you know, countered and then they come back with a much more reasonable offer and, we, and I end up making a sale. So you don't want to have that knee jerk reaction. You don't want to decline it. Make sure you counter and remember that you are getting better search results because of it. So exactly. Um, <laughs> Binky, Binky's in the cheese at. Oh, That's my sister. She, too. she said, I would let my kids starve to get that shirt. <laughs> Derek said I offer $4. Thanks well, Derek. Binky and and Big Fish. We have some celebrities in the his house. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go on to your next uh, sale. Uh, this was something else that I had actually picked up in uh, Rhode Island. I paid seven dollars for these shoes. They are new. They have the tags on them still, and uh, that's what they sold for. They sold for eighty nine ninety five. Mm -hmm. Golf shoes. I'm telling you. Yep, you and you and your uh, your newfound love affair of, with golf shoes. I have a newfound love affair with golf shoes. Yep, I, I like to think I'm a little responsible for that. Yeah, because what did of, you have to do with me? Not, no, 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 not these. But we were at that one uh, state sale, and I was like, "Hey, you should buy these shoes." It was a pair of golf shoes that were like wingtip, vintage. vintage oh, they sold for 150. Yeah, yeah. and that, and I feel like that was kind of like the beginning of you paying think, more attention. I think to golf it was. Shoes. I think it so, was. I'm just going to take credit for that. Sure. Uh, exclusive elegance. Um, Heather says, I do the automatic decline just so I can be happy with every offer. Here's the thing. I urge you, Heather, stop doing an automatic decline because you never know. Sometimes people make mistakes. I, one time I had a guy who offered me, it was like $3 and I came back with like whatever I came back with. And then he wrote, he did another counter offer. And he's like, oh, my mistake. I meant to do 35 or something like that. Um, so you just never know. Um, and if you have best offer in your item, that means you're willing to come down. So I wouldn't decline. I would just No, I think she's back. talking about, she does the, uh, it auto declines under a certain amount. Right. And what I'm saying is that you're not doing a counter offer. You're never even seeing that. Oh. So I'm saying that you're shutting down a conversation before you allow it to even happen. And so gotcha. if you auto decline just because you won't take that amount, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. So I don't know. Anyway. So let's go to my next one. Here is another pair of shoes Ooh. that I uh, that I did retail arbitrage. I believe I got these at Burlington Coat Factory, and I actually got a number of them. It's not called Burlington Coat Factory anymore. It's just sorry, Burlington. Burlington. My apologies, Burlington. because they sell more than just coats. Yes. Okay. Have you heard the commercials? Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um, I think I took an offer for 145. I believe I paid 30 to either 30 or 40 dollars a pair. And I got I remember these. I remember yep. when you, you you got a few of them. Yep. So I sold these for 145. I imagine I'll probably sell the rest when I come closer to uh, fourth quarter. Um, it was a nice little sale. Yeah, it was a nice. Yep. Yeah. All right. 
and you. So this is, uh, I actually occasionally do retail arbitrage as well, uh, not very often, but once in a while. Um, so these recently came out on the Vans website. This was a whole new line that they just released, the Vincent Van Gogh Museum Vans, a couple of different styles. I happened to be on the Vans website. I'd heard about it. It was on uh, Facebook and a couple people talked about it here and there. So I checked it out and went on the Vans website and then I kind of took a look at, um, at eBay and saw how they were already selling, people were pre-selling them. And uh, at that time, Vans was out, uh, the Vans website was out of almost every size and every model. Yeah. So I was able to actually snag this one pair. <laughs> I paid $70 delivered and I sold them within 24 hours for 150 plus shipping uh, international. Nice. Had I known I would have been able to flip them that well, I would have purchased more, but I was kind of testing it. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I know, I will definitely keep an eye out for future uh, exclusive releases. But they sold in 24 hours and they paid $25 to ship them. I um, can't remember exactly where they went. Maybe Spain. So was, Mexico? Maybe Mexico. I think it was Mexico. I insured them either way because uh, it was 150 Alexis is in the house. What up, Alexis? Hello. Uh, but hey, guys, we've talked about this before. Um, you know, I've gotten T-shirts like that Stussy T-shirt I just sold recently. Uh, it was it was a um, a collaboration with a record label. It was a memorial T-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime you see like a brand come out and they're doing a collaboration with another brand or with something else, so in this case it's with the Van Gogh Museum. Uh, generally, that means it's going to be a limited release for one thing. Um, and also they usually are hyping them a lot. And, uh, so yeah, so if you ever see something, whether you're thrifting it or getting it new like this, and it's a collaboration, um, pay a little more attention, maybe do some research, uh, or if it's super mm -hmm. cheap, go ahead and buy it because I'm telling you collaborations a lot of times, um, can bring in a lot of money. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, I really like these bands too. I would wear them. Um, I don't right. like that style to slip on, but I do like the pattern. Mm, yeah. Okay, so here's my little Etsy sale. Uh, so the cool thing about this, I have been, um, I've been talking to you guys about how I'm going through and ending my oldest listings on eBay and then doing sell similar so I can rework them and make them fresh brand new listings. And so I've been doing it uh, a little like slowly because I'm really going and like kind of overhauling the listings. So I've been doing like anywhere from 10 to 20 a day. And then anything that's vintage, I'm also cross posting over to Etsy. Um, so this is a cardigan that I listed um, over a year ago. And so I ended it relisted it on uh, eBay through sell similar cross posted it and I sold it within a day on uh, Etsy. I actually had it priced at $35.99. They asked if I would take 30 and I was like, sure. And so I got that sale done. I'm pretty stoked about it. So I'm like all this stuff has been just sitting around waiting to sell. Yep. Yep. All the old junk. Yep. So I, I was... mean, I mean treasured goods. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, and then your last one, uh, so I talked about these uh, skates last week, actually, in our in our uh, sale video. I had purchased two pairs, uh, one pair of men's black ones and one pair of white women's. And I sold the black ones the day that I posted them. And then two days later, the gentleman that purchased the black ones came back and asked to purchase these, and he paid the same price. So I, pay, I sold these for $165. I had paid twenty dollars for them, so I sold two pairs for. I'm sorry, there were one. This, these are one sixty five. The other pair is one seventy five, and I paid twenty dollars a piece for them. So yeah, that was a good sale. Very very nice. And they were quick, quick flip. It took me almost a month to list them, and then they both sold within three days. So nice. Uh, somebody had a question. Let's Kathleen see. wants to know about the cardigan. It's Jansen is the is the name. Um, Most so, popular with swimwear, J A N T Z E N. They sell. Yeah, swimwear. they do a lot. They they have a lot of sweaters, and so the cardigans. Vintage, they did. Yeah, vintage. So the cardigans uh, do pretty decently, although as you can see, this one sat around for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's Jansen. All right, so I think that's everything. Yeah, and then I think let's see what do we have here. Um, there was another question that Heather uh, Exclusive Elegance asked if we other uh, one of us are on Posh. No, we've answered that a couple times, but no. Nope. No posh here. No yeah. time. No. I just we don't, don't have the time. We can't handle the sharing aspects. 
Yeah. See, it's I am really terrible when it comes to social media. I have to force myself to. I mean, we already do this show out. three hours, you know, three shows a week. That's a minimum of three hours a week. Plus we're selling on eBay and Etsy and sourcing and shipping yeah. and photography. We already work seven days a week, 10 hours a day minimum. Um, I just, I can't even imagine adding another platform yeah. <laughs> and diluting from eBay where I know I'm going to get higher prices on my items. Yeah. I know that Posh is easier um, to list. Uh, I've heard that many times. I've actually never even been on the site. I have no idea. Drummer how says it's... the sharing is horrible. Yeah. I just can't deal. Um, if I had enough money to pay someone to work for me as a virtual assistant and just do that for me, maybe, uh, it would have to be well worth it though. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd have to be making a thousand dollars a week on Posh for that to be worth it for me. Yeah. My whole thing is it's like you want to, um, cater to your strengths. So it's like if, uh, you know, I knew it, I need, I knew I needed to like spread out to some other, um, platforms and Etsy for me makes the most sense because it does, you know, uh, vintage stuff, men's vintage does pretty right. well on it. So I'm like, it's really easy to cross list over there. I like yeah. it. It fits in with like my style. Um, whereas posh, it's just, it's, it's not for me. And yeah. I know and I mean, 50% of my clothing sales are, uh, maybe 50% of my clothing sales are vintage items anyway. So that's not going to work on posh. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and clothing is not all that I do. So honestly, it's just, if I were to sell on posh, that's diluting my time and my market away from yeah. eBay, which is a known platform that does well for me. So yeah, I get that it works for a lot of people. I get that it's a quick flip. And especially if you're selling, um, lower end prices or twenty thirty dollars items or less and you just want to flip them real fast and you're going to get you know your shipping and all that kind of stuff I get that but I am rarely selling items that are that inexpensive um, well and you also what you want to you want to take on uh, platforms and revenue streams that you know you can commit to yeah like you don't want to just kind of half ass it and I know that like for me because of the whole sharing aspect like I just wouldn't I would put it off and I would end up not doing it. it's kind of like the whole thing of like not listing pants it's like, I know I don't like doing it. I know I'm going to be keep putting it off. And it's like, if I, if I do buy, I, occasionally I still buy pants or shorts, but it's really rare and I have to force myself to do it. And so I, that's why I just don't source them anymore because I know I'm just going to keep putting them off. Yeah. So yeah. Euro X TRM, do what you're good at, learn new things. If you ever spare, have spare time. Yes. Um, I, I don't know what spare time is, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, if we ever had spare time, maybe we would try an, uh, another platform. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just well, not there well, yet. Well, it's like, it's even like with the YouTube thing. It's like when I first started, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I hadn't figured out what, how I wanted the channel to look and what I wanted to feel like. Mm -hmm. And so I was really sporadic and like, I would go weeks at a time, even a month or two at a time without putting a video out. And you know, it didn't really take off until I finally figured out how I wanted it to go and I committed to it. And then I was like, okay, we're going to have these shows on these days at these times. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we have to do it every single week. And, you know, and then I added on the uh, no pants Friday. So now we've got three shows, mm -hmm. but it's like, because it's consistent, it's at the same time and you know, when you're going to get it, it's, it's like people pay attention. So it's like, it only works if you have, if you commit to it. Yeah. Um, the Bigster wants to know uh, what's going on with my shirt right here. It, I have the hipster hop cat. See, I call him the hipster hop cat. Mm. That's my shirt. <sighs> Christian says I should really talk to someone about the aversion. To I don't pants. know. Binky's on the chat here. Binky's the, uh, the only sibling. What is the aversion to pants? Come on, do tell. We need well, here's history. here's the, here's the thing, guys. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a joke because it's like, I don't, I really don't wear pants when I'm at home. And then also the fact that I hate to, uh, I hate taking pictures of them mainly. Um, it's the picture issue. Like taking a good picture of pants just doesn't really work. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, and I don't do flat lay that might make it easier, but so it's sometimes, just, yeah. Depends on how the flat lay is done. So I just it's don't like doing it. Angle, the ones at an angle are terrible and it's just. Yeah, I, I actually had it down. Like I had a really good way of taking pants, uh, but it took longer because it was when I was back in Oregon, I would actually attach them to the wall so there would be no nothing hanging in it. They looked really good, but again, it took longer to do it. But anyway, but what's funny about my sister being in the chat is that she says pants hurt her once. They were funny. Is, so my sister has my sister has four kids. One of them, he's grown. Um, he's twenty two, but the other three are still kids. And uh, I swear, I don't remember with Isaac, he's the one that's grown up, but her kids, uh, I'm pretty sure Lane, who's eight, I, I don't think he's still, 
wears pants when he's at home. He just runs around in his underwear. Pretty all much. His tidy whities Uh the other kids, all you know, all three of the kids, I swear, you come over and they just don't have clothes on. They just never have clothes on. They're I mean, just happy being yeah. free. Yeah. See, so it runs in the family. They don't want right? to be restricted. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh anyway, okay, so yeah, Binky says Lane never wears pants. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't happen. Uh your nephew. Yeah, that's my nephew. He's eight. All okay. right. Are you starting? I don't know, am I? I think so. You right. should go first. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start with t-shirts. Literally guys, I stopped looking through my stack because I'm like, I kept, I kept pulling stuff out to be like, I want to show this. I want to show this. So I found uh, a ton of t-shirts, um, both while we were out, um, going to yard sales. I actually did okay with clothes. I found yeah. stuff most of the places we went. Um, I got a bunch of t-shirts and then I got lots of, uh, jackets and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll start just showing you guys the t-shirts I got. Yeah, Binky he says, as soon as uh, Lane gets in the house, he strips down, I swear, all the kids. Um, so the first thing I found, I got these at Savers. Now, what was awesome about Savers is it was 25% off day, but for some reason at two of the six stores I went to, uh, I think maybe like their computers hadn't been switched over yet, and they were doing like 50% off of all the t-shirts. And they were saying something, like the first place I went, she was like, why does it keep doing this? And then the guy was like, oh, don't worry about it. So I got 50% off of like all the t-shirts and tank tops at the first two places. And then they must've fixed it because then it was no more, but, um, Harley Davidson, let me see which one I want to show first. So these are both kind of the, uh, I don't know what do you call this. It's not really tie dye. It's like acid wash, it's like acid wash. So this one is from stone washed. I think this one's from 2000, 2000 Sturgis rag, which is, is it still happening right now or is it over? Uh, so now Sturgis actually was just up into this up through this weekend, I believe. Yep. So this one today might be the last is day or sweet. yesterday. So it's South Dakota, y'all. Throw a little southern twang into my South Dakota, y'all, y'all. <laughs> um, anyway, so I was excited about that. This is actually the one I think is super cool. This one's from uh, this one's actually from '98, and I like this one because it's like a 1970s Harley, and so it's got. It's got Richard Nixon on it and the Statue of Liberty and uh, this dude. What's this guy's name? For some reason, like our minds are going blank. We can't remember what that guy's name is, but I'm out. terrible at history. Well, you didn't know when I showed it to you before. Anyway, um, oh, and it's also got Kadafi. Evil, evil Knievel on it. I think that's who that's supposed to be with the little star pants. But how cool is this? I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Uh. Heather wants to know how I do on Harley or how we do on Harley. Just got a bunch because of us. 125 of them. Wait, what? Lee, Lee Ayatola. Thank you, drummer. That's who that is. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Heather got 125. Okay, so Harley t-shirts. Here's the thing about Harleys. Okay, 3D emblem. You're going to be able to sell for a ton, right? Made in the USA. Yeah, made in, the, made in the USA. Now, just regular vintage that's not um, 3D emblem. You're going to sell pretty well. It's going to be, I don't know, what would you say, like? 30 bucks, 30 to 40 bucks, depending yeah. on what it is. Um, and then the other, the last part, so like uh, current stuff doesn't sell as well. However, it does depend on what the graphic is on it. Mm -hmm. Also, so it depends can, on if it's a jacket. If it's t shirts, you know, 20, 30 bucks tops, yeah. but depends on the graphic. Yeah. So if like, uh, if you had the current one, but it had like a huge bald eagle and like American flag mm -hmm. on it, you're probably going to be able to sell that too. So. So we had a couple of questions here. Uh, Rita Scully Star Fashions asked, uh, how much is the shipping on the skates? I have some, but not sure how to cha uh, change shipping or charge shipping. I did free shipping on them. They're quite heavy. They were 10 pounds. Um, I sent them FedEx home delivery and they cost, I believe, $19 to ship each pair. And because it was the same guy, I'm a little irritated they didn't buy them together. It would have been cheaper to send them together, but whatever. Um, so it cost well, you're me pretty about, sure he probably is reselling them. Yeah, them. and that's fine. I don't care. I made enough money on them. Um, but he, they were about $19 to ship to him, and they went across the country. So depending on where they're going to, either do free shipping and count at least that amount into your uh, your total sale price, or do calculated shipping and let the buyer pay. But those were $10 um, in, their, in their box. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were 10 pounds in their box. I'm sorry, not $10. All right. I'll show a couple more t-shirts. And quick. there was another quick question oh. while you're pulling those out. That's fine. I can answer the question. Um, let's see. The one thing that we've sold for the highest profit margin, um, I've been selling for so long, that's honestly really hard to say. For me, it was probably a vintage photograph that I sold. 
Um, about seven years ago, I paid $10 for a box of vintage cabinet cards and photographs. And I turned that one photo in that box sold for $1,500 and several others sold for a couple hundred. I haven't found anything like that since. I don't still to this day, don't know why that photograph was that special, but it was of a, a Russian czar that was wearing a specific medal on his chest. And it sold to somebody in Russia and they paid $1,500 for a cabinet card photograph. Crazy. It was insane. Uh, I've always pretty much just sold clothes. So for the most part, nothing crazy, crazy. But I will say there were a couple of things I found at the bins in Oregon where you're paying 99 cents mm -hmm. a pound. I found a polo Ralph Lauren leather jacket. Um, and I sold it for, I think I sold it for like $450. $450. So I only paid like crazy. maybe like $5 for it. But here's what's really crazy. Uh, the guy who bought it from me did not want to pay. He wanted to send me, he, I think he asked me if I would take like a check or money order. Um, and he wanted to mail it to me. And I was like, yeah, I'll take a money order, which here you go, guys. It's definitely okay. Just have them buy it from the post office. Right. And so what happens is you take they mail it, it they the mail it to you. You get it in the mail, you go to the post office, and then the post office will give you the cash. And That's so then, how you know it's real. Right. You know it's real because they just handed you cash. Um, and so then once you have the cash, you mark it paid and you ship it. And so uh, so I was like, yeah. And so he mails it to me. I open it up. He sent me cash. Oh, I've had that happen. A he lot. sent me actual cash. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Back so in the day when people weren't using PayPal, when they used to actually send money orders and personal checks and you had to wait a 10 days for the check to clear before you would ship the item that that really happened yeah um yeah and i know that's how it was would conceal, the they right. would send you know concealed cash they would wrap it right. and so he know, sent paper. it to me um and i think he sent it like overnight or something like that mm -hmm. and so i shipped to him the jacket and it was like the same one that he used to have and he had lost it or something and he loved it um and then like a month or two later he ordered he did the same thing for some polo ralph lauren button down shirts okay whatever so, I haven't sold anything to him since, but that was a good one. Well, he probably got rolled. <laughs> I don't know. He said cash in the probably. mail. Dummy. Uh, anyway, yeah. So if you ever have somebody who wants to do a money order, that's all you got to do is, is get one from the post office. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the other, let me show these t-shirts really quick at uh, Savers. This is another one of those things where it came out on the rack and I grabbed it before it even got put away. Um, and so, yeah, somebody, this was on the rack and they priced it $2.49. This is crazy. It's a vintage... Stanley Cup, uh, Detroit Red Wings, um, it's nice big big size, uh, an extra large. Um, like how cool is that, guys? I pulled that, I yanked that right off of the rack. Then while I'm looking through the t-shirts, they must have brought another rack out because this lady was putting away t-shirts, and on the other side, I saw uh, her hanging something up, and I looked over, grabbed it. Must have been probably from the same dude. Cause look at this, another hockey t-shirt. Another Red, Red Wings. Wings. Yep, nice large size, vintage. Um, this one's priced six forty nine. So they priced These that one. These all feel really new. I know, right? What are they? Stitch. They're crispy. They're crispy. Uh, this one's six forty nine, which is a fine price. But the other one was like two forty nine. I don't know why they would price it so cheap. Anyway, I think I got those for fifty percent off. So nice. go ahead. All There's right. So I did. I did really well with shoes this week for some reason, uh, both selling and buying. So I'm going to talk about shoes a little bit, some brands maybe that people have not heard about. Uh, men's shoes. Men's shoes do really well. It's the one kind of thing that always sells and I never get returns on. Men know what size their shoe is. Pretty much. Oh, really, really. really what kind of shoes they like. Really quick. Christiane wants to know if 3D Emblem is the brand. Um, and if so, are there shirts other than Harley by them? I think there are. It is the brand. I think it's, a, it's a brand. It's a designer. It's a type of design. Right. And so, And here's the thing, though. With 3D Emblem, it's not always going to be on the actual tag. Now, some of the tags, if you look at, like, Allison's um, Instagram, she had posted, like, a throwback photo of a Harley mm -hmm. 3D Emblem, and it was the actual tag. There are some Harley shirts that do not have Harley tags, and they're not 3D Emblem tags. And you're going to think, like, they're fake, but they're not. And they do have the 3D Emblem in the copyright information on the actual shirt. So, all right, go ahead. All right, so um, anyway, men don't return shoes. So if you get good high-end brands, and no, no John Verados this time, Alexis. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, she bought the last pair in town. But this is a pair by, uh, this is a European brand called uh, Mephisto. It's M-E, I don't know, what is it? M-E-P-H-I-S-T-O. Uh, I believe these are made in Spain. And these are just a regular, like an Oxford. 
They're a nice leather. They have what's called a bicycle toe. Bicycle toe is like the squared off toe. Ooh. And, I didn't uh, know that. They're nicely stitched. And I paid, I think, 7 or $8 for these because they were on 50% off day when we went last, uh, last weekend, I think. And... Uh, I listed them for a little over a hundred. I'll do hundred or best offer. They'll probably sell for about 80 to 90. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I had a couple more pairs of shoes. So this pair is a pair that I picked up for $3 yesterday at a garage sale. These are uh, foot joy. So they're a golf shoe. Uh, but what makes them special is that they're the leather kind and they're Oxfords that are laced up. And then this is real crocodile. Um, so these are a high end foot joy shoe. Some of these are going for as high as two, three, four hundred dollars Those are sweet. I don't think these are going to sell quite that high. I think these are a little bit newer based on the rubbery bottom on them, but the vintage ones go for a ton. Uh, so I paid $3. I have these listed for a little over a hundred as well. I'd be happy to get about 85 to a hundred on them. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Juliana found Ralph Lauren uh, snow beach vest at Value Village, paid $5.99, sold for $900. Could have been more, but it was a size small and had ink marks. That is crazy. That's awesome. Uh, Heather wants to know, do you stay away from any Tommy Hilfiger, uh, Hilfiger or Tommy Bahama or buy it all no matter what? Um, well, oh, I ignore Tommy Bahama. Tommy Bahama has jumped the shark. Um, it does not really sell for very well anymore, and this thrift stores tend to have them priced at $10 or higher. If you're lucky, you're going to get 30 bucks for a Tommy Bahama silk shirt. Um, if it's got the big embroidered graphic on the back, you might get more if it's a limited edition one. But for the most part, I think I have a, a couple that have been sitting in my store for a good six months to a year. Um, they just... Yeah, the only I would say the only Tommy Bahama that you should get is what she just said. The ones that have, um, the, they have like a full graphic embroidery on the back. Those are pretty much the only ones that sell anymore. Yep. Because um, it's just like super oversaturated and people just don't buy them anymore as much. Um, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, the plain button downs don't no. really sell for anything. Um, so button downs, I don't bother. Um, the only button downs I would get are the ones that there are some that have stuff printed on the back. Like if it has like a big flag or like the, uh, mm -hmm. the color block ones, um, those are still good, but seriously, like just go, just go and like do a search of, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, look at solds and you want to look at stuff like how many actual solds there are compared to how many are listed. So let's say there's 20,000 listed and a thousand have sold. Like that's terrible. Yeah, um, in the last 90 days. So you really want to look at stuff like that and you'll, you'll get an idea of like the stuff that actually does sell and what doesn't sell. Um, so yeah, Tommy Hilfiger, not always going to be a good buy. Um, yeah, I but. agree. All right, I'm going to do one more pair of shoes and then you can go since you get a bunch of uh, stuff. I picked these up at a garage sale yesterday too. These are uh, new old stock uh, sneakers. They're a, uh, looks like a comfort sport walking shoe. It's a tonic. It's E-T-O-N-I-C. Um, they're um, moderately priced brand in between, but these are vintage and they're a collaboration with Fred Perry. Mm. Fred Perry is a higher end designer and I can't tell exactly how old these are, but I think they're early 2000 or late 90s. Um, I haven't listed them yet, but I haven't found anything exactly like them. So they're new old stock. They have a cardboard in them still. The only thing is that the glue around the edges has kind of like yellowed a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which is like the glue in the seams. But otherwise, these are a nice like leather, new old stock men's shoe. They're like a size 13. Um, I think I'm going to list these for over 100 as well, but I haven't been able to find any comps. So I got to dig a little deeper on those. So I'll let you. Uh, Karma wants to know what about a Bahama button down Christmas shirt. So is it like a Christmas pattern? I mean, that might sell. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe so. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me go. I got a couple more t-shirts. Uh, and Robert Graham. Robert Graham's hit or miss too. It's going to be a really good um, design and style because they're a little bit out of fashion as well now. They do so sell, but they're it's not just, it really depends for, on the patterns that are on them and stuff. They're not selling for what they used to sell for. They used to sell, you know, like anything else that has its time, it has its day. Affliction used to be a great sale, true religion, all that kind of stuff. It's all out of fashion now. Yeah. Um, you gotta stay current with what's with what's you know hot. Yep. Uh, a couple more t shirts. Um, I got this really cool uh it's like a Paris um marathon t shirt from nineteen ninety three. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, it's interesting because the tag is like totally different from anything I've seen before just because made in SAR. What is SAR? 
made in SAR. I don't know. I don't know what that is because this is not a this is not an American tag. Uh, but I think that's a cool, really cool shirt. I like the the shirts that are like around races and racing events and stuff. This one is my favorite one, probably my favorite T-shirt I found this week. I found this at we went to this cool. Um, it, it's like a for like an animal shelter or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they do, I guess they, they say they do a sale every weekend. This is like the first time we've seen it listed in a long time, but we went and I got this t-shirt. Check it out guys. And tell me what, tell me something about the shirt. Feel it. Feel it. It's crispy. It's crispy. It is. It says help save the orangutans, uh, orangutan foundation, international USA call 1-800 orangutan. Look at that. It's a sweet single stitch, super, super crispy. Um, there is no tag in this shirt, but not a big deal because like I said, it's single stitch. So it's like, I know that this is like a, this is an old t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, very crispy. So I like I mean, the save the orangutans. Yep. And yes, Fred Perry, uh, Fred Perry is a tennis player, but there is also a designer Fred Perry. Um, if you look at, uh, a brand called Sourpuss, which is a current rockabilly type of, uh, rockabilly, psychobilly, horribilly, uh, brand. Uh, Fred Perry does a collaboration with uh, Sourpuss that is current. So it is a designer as well. I just haven't been able to do enough research to figure out how bat far back I need to find out what, what this collaboration is with Atonic, um, whether it was, you know, a line for the soccer player or if it was a designer. I just have to take, I haven't looked far enough into it yet. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me show... Another thing I found, you guys, you guys, you guys, check it out. Check out this sweet Ugh, Miller Lite Christmas sweater. I grabbed this. Uh, it was ten ninety nine, so I got 25% off on it. Um, I grabbed this. I looked it up before I bought it because it was, you know, for something like this, it was a little bit spendier. And there was like one place we went where I found, uh, I think that was in one of our one of our sourcing videos, I had found like this, um, it was like some football team, like a Christmas sweater. And I looked it up and it like sold for $20. So I was like, I'm not gonna buy that. This, however, these sell new for like a hundred dollars. Um, there aren't a ton of them. Uh, we are coming into the holiday season soon. I know that sounds crazy being, uh, August, but I should be able to sell this, I think for about 80 bucks. Um, so yeah, that was not too bad. Roll. I was, I was just hoping that she wasn't keeping it, but she oh. has an awful <laughs> lot of Chris Mahana Kwanzaa cat t-shirt things going on already. So we're mm. good. Maybe if it was like Yingling beer, but Miller Lite. Mm, mm -hmm. no. Anyway, so I'm pretty The stoked. ugly sweater parties are a lot of fun. I enjoy them personally too. Uh, what's real nice about them is uh, I like to make my own. Yeah. And I, I pretty much win every year when I make my own. Yeah. She, uh, she makes some pretty good ones. Um, and then speaking of brands that have uh, just kind of gone out of style, um, one of those would be uh, Ed Hardy. So Ed Hardy used to be yeah. huge, huge, right? And so um, now Super it's like nobody. Super popular, gaudy, ugly yeah. crap with like dragons and stuff on it. But, but there are some things that still sell. Because I looked this up because I'm like, I wonder if this style will sell. And... So this is a pretty cool, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's got four stripes instead of three, but clearly it's very much a, it's supposed to look kind of like an Adidas track jacket. Mm -hmm. um, obviously all over print graphic, um, kind of like a, a tattoo kind of look. Um, it's embroidered. Um, and these, this style of jacket still sells. It was $12.99. Um, I paid, you know, 25% off of that. Um, I should still be able to sell this for 50 bucks. So at least 50 bucks. She's like, she's like, no, I wouldn't even pick that up. Yeah. Well, again, I looked it up cause I'm like, okay, I knew usually I'd go right past anything at Hardy. The flipping stuff is funny. I want that sweater. I would be queen of the hillbillies with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I got to hold the sweater up again real quick for Dana. Here you go, Dana. And yes, I did see the article that said a study has shown people who decorate for Christmas earlier are happier. It's true. I decorate uh, Thanksgiving weekend. For Christmas, I'm mm -hmm. I, because I host Thanksgiving as well. I do have some pretty fall decorations I like to keep up. If I didn't host Thanksgiving and do an open house on Thanksgiving, I would probably start decorating for Christmas in October. Yeah, and she I has could. she has one Christmas tree that's up year round. It's it's over there, so you can't see it, but it's a uh, it's her peacock Christmas tree. So it's mm -hmm. a little white. It's like a little 
white tree and then it has a bunch of like peacock ornaments and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i put my ornament from kara cooper on there yeah but at christmas time mm -hmm. which again starts november 1st pretty much yeah <laughs> and uh, goes until january 6th and the epiphany yeah uh christmas time three more trees come out so there'll be uh four a tree in here four more is it four more no three more three more so four all together There'll be a tree in here. This is the the Island of Misfits, Misfit Toys, right? Yeah, I do Rudolph, Rudolph Island of Misfit Toys. And then I have a mm -hmm. snowman, mm -hmm. all snowman Christmas tree. And then I have my more formal tree, yeah. which is just like gold and red. And Luckily, I love Christmas. So mm -hmm. we it goes, we go well together because we both love Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, I also love Halloween. October's like my, other than Christmas time, like October is like my favorite month of the year because I like horror movies, so it's like we may have to actually decorate this year. I decorate for fall, but I've never really yeah. decorated for Halloween, so we may have to get some fun stuff. We'll I'll see. be watching lots of um, horror movies. It's just like an excuse mm -hmm. for me to like watch a horror movie every single day. So, and I have like my Halloween uh, playlist that I play on um, Spotify all the time. So, you know. All right, uh, you want to go ahead? Uh, sure. Okay, so. I picked up a couple of hard goods that uh, when we were garage sale, and one of the things that I love to pick up is uh, vintage electronics. So something that I picked up is a a vintage 1970s um, calculator by Commodore. And what I thought was pretty fun is that at the original price on it was $80. That's crazy. It was $80 for an electronic calculator. And it's really cool. It's um, Some of them sell for quite a bit. Some don't sell for much at all. Uh, this one, if I think if I've listed it correctly, can sell for about 75 bucks. I paid $2 for it. And this particular one is like, uh, it has the uh, receipt from purchase in it. And they purchased it in like 1974. So that was before I was born. They got it on sale for $50, right? Yeah. Before I was born, this sold for $50. So that's a lot of money to pay for a calculator, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is like one step after the abacus. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna put some batteries in it and test it and make sure it works. And then the other thing I picked up for $3 is I love vintage luggage. Ooh, Binky, Binky's gonna love this. Yeah, Katie says that you guys used to have one like this. It is a big, huge train case hat box type of uh, luggage. It's not dirty. It looks like it's dirty, but it's not. It's um. It's a marbleized look. Uh, it is a little dirty, but it's not as dirty as it looks. And it's made by Samsonite, and it's got this little mm -hmm. handle and the latch. See, Binky, did we not have this exact same suitcase, right? We used to use it all the time. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, I paid $3. Some of them are listed for are up to around 100 or so. Binky says I still have it. Oh, nice. See, nice, Binky, nice. you could sell it for like 100 bucks. And I agree with that, Renee. Uh, Renee says... It, uh, in New York, you take Christmas down at Easter after we thaw. I agree with you. I'm from Rhode Island, so I would take my outside decorations out down sometime in April as well when the snow finally thawed, uh, and you could pry it off the trees or the bushes outside. So the inside, the outside stuff would stay out until April. It's why I always use white lights because white lights look far less tacky than the colored lights in the middle of April. So <laughs> I'm with you. I understand that. Uh, Kara wants to know if you're going to include a picture of the receipt. Um, in oh the yeah. Listing. I will. I'll, I'll sell it with it with the receipt on. It doesn't have any personal information. If it did, it's 40, yeah, 40 years old. So, well, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. Um, let me show some jackets that I found. This right here is amazing. And it was only $7.99 guys. What? I swear sometimes savers, like they overprice certain things and other stuff. They apparently have no idea that it has any value whatsoever. I know you never know. Seven ninety nine. This is actually, uh, I this is a Sears jacket. It smells like cigarettes. Does it? Mm -hmm. It's not super strong. You managed to put it I'll probably put it outside in the sun. Um, anyway, this is a Sears jacket. And then, oh, this is really cool. In the pocket, we've got a sweet belt to go with it. Oh, Look nice. At that. Look at that nice. belt. Look at that belt. Anyway, so yeah, I paid 25% off of $7.99. And uh, I don't know, I could probably sell this for like 60 bucks, do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All day long. Like mm -hmm. And it's very hipster. Very hipster. And then, and then, more hipster. We were out uh, yard sales. We went to an estate sale. And I got this. Check it out. How sweet is this? This is also Sears. Um, and this is like really nice, like faux Sherpa lined. It does have some markings like on the back. 
Um, but whatever. I still think I can sell it for like 40 to 60 bucks. Um, oh, I think 60, 70. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So uh, good luck getting uh, rid of the cigarette smell. Um, mm -mm. That's cauterized. She could throw that in the washing machine if she needed to. Yeah. Cigarette smell comes out of everything. It's, and it's actually not very strong. I didn't even know this. No, I'm just super sensitive yeah. to smell. So I don't it's not very strong. Right um, and when you put it out in the sun, that actually helps a lot. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting my, anything in my freezer where I keep food. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if I had a refree, like a, like a, a freezer type of, trunk freezer that people have in their garages and stuff like that maybe i would but mm -hmm. we have a side-by-side -side refrigerator with very tiny shelves yeah so it's not gonna all right i also fit. got this was the week of the uh satin bomber jacket look at this apparently i got one too yeah this one 10.99 so 25 percent off of that this is a uh, moose lodge one i love it i love the green oh, i like that white. one this is a good one um, you got that one at garage sale for three dollars. No, this no this oh, one. No, this Savers one was one. Savers. Uh, this one also Savers. Um, this is somebody's for somebody's like tattoo um, business. I think it's kind of cool. Oh, I like that. Isn't that cool? I didn't see that one. Made in the U.S. This was you didn't show it. Well, I think I showed you. I, I don't think I showed you every single that one. That one's but. really cool. Yeah. Right. And then, um, and then I also got this one was ten ninety nine. I also got this at Saber, so twenty five percent off of that. This is just a blank one. It's kind of a cool. I don't know if you can really see it very well the color, but it's like a really cool like uh, dark green. Um, green. This is vintage. Yeah, it's you get. It's oh, kind yeah, of hard to green. tell. It looks kind of, kind of like navy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, it's this is like a it's a style of bomber, bomber jacket. So yeah, you definitely want to say bomber satin bomber. Mm -hmm. um, and then one more. This one, it's just the trophy house. I mean, this one I won't be able to sell for as much because it's kind of a weird thing that's like, uh, but it was only $5.99. That's why I bought it because it was 25% off of that. So uh, the cooler ones I can probably sell for 40, 50 bucks. Um, this something like this, I'll probably just sell it for like 30. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we had a couple of questions in here. Lots of tips of getting rid of cigarette smell. I agree with all of them. Uh, almost all of them will work other than I'm not putting anything in my freezer. But for the most part, anything, I'll throw anything in the washing machine. So, and that gets rid of it too. Yeah. So, um, but then there was a question about how do we ship jackets? Um, and, uh, or how do you account for the average cost for shipping? I'm, I'm trying to find the question here right now. Hold on one second. How do you pack jackets and average shipping cost from David Duarte or Duarte? Um, uh, well, most jackets, it depends on what it is because yeah. most jackets, uh, a lot of jackets I can actually get into a padded flat rate. Me too. Um, so like, like these, these satin jackets. Will now a lot of these aren't even a pound. Sometimes they're only like 14, 15 mm -hmm. ounces. And so in which case I just do first class. Um, but if they're over a pound, I can just, I do like to, I fold them in. Fold and roll. Fold. And then I roll them up, I fold them kind of in half, then I roll them and I put them in a, in a flat rate mailer. Uh, let's see, Desiree says, don't you call those letter jackets? No, letter jackets are more of the wool type or uh, the baseball style letter jackets. It's usually two-tone, the sleeves and the body are two different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so basically pretty much all bombers, um, I'm trying to think of like a, a good way to like describe what makes it a bomber jacket. Uh, partly it's the sleeve. It's the, it's, it's like the of, angle of the, the neck and the sleeve. It's got like an, an A line kind of. Yeah. And the uh, elastic bottom. And then it's kind of puffy. I don't, it's, I, it's, it's like a hard question to answer. Yeah. Uh, it's just a I style. mean, there's, there's like the bomber flight jacket and those are the ones that have, they usually have like a little zipper right here. Um, and they're like legit, like military, like mm -hmm. flight jackets. And then there's the more, um, these kind of bomber jackets where, uh, it's not the satininess of them. That's like a separate thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's more of like kind of the shape where it's, it's kind of shape and style. It's kind of inspired by legit it has bomber the jackets. Band, the cuff. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. And we ship, you know, it'll ship either first class or it's going to get rolled and, and, like no one to fold them and no one to roll them as drummer said, that's good. Yeah. Uh, folded and rolled into a priority flat rate, or sometimes it's going to fit in just a, a poly mailer or a box. I mean, um, there's never going to be a, well, not never, but there's very rarely going to be a jacket, no matter how heavy it is that won't fit into a medium flat rate box. Yeah. So even if it's a big bulky leather jacket or a pair of chaps or something that weigh like six or seven pounds, 
generally speaking, you're going to get it into a medium flat rate box. So if you do free shipping like Katie and I do, just figure on the maximum being, you know, 12 or $13 for what your shipping actual cost is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once you get to know shipping costs across the country and how you're going to ship something before you even list it, then you can kind of know where you want to price things based on how much it's going to cost you to ship. Yeah. Uh, um, DJ says, I found a black one with neon colors embroidery on front and back. How much do you think I should price it? Honestly, DJ, we'd have to see it to be able to. Yeah, I got to see a picture and see how old it is and what uh, it actually has on it. It really depends on what the, the subject matter is for the embroidery. Yep. Um, well, I found a satin jacket this week, too. Now, <clears throat> it is a vintage satin jacket. It is not made in the USA, but it was, uh, I would say, 90s. Mm -hmm. So it's made by a company called West Arc, which is a pretty uh, common company for uh, satin jackets. It's a company that would print all different kind of things mm -hmm. on the jackets. Well, this is a Las Vegas jacket for a, a bar, I think it is. I haven't looked it up yet, called the Fada Bing. <laughs> what I think is funny about this is that this was uh, before The Sopranos. So uh, this jacket was made before that series was out. So I thought yeah. that was kind of cool. So I paid $3 for that. I'll probably list it for 40 or 50 bucks. And let's see, I've got just a couple more things to show. Okay. Um, let's see, I picked up this sweater. This was at a garage sale as well. This was $2. It's just this um, made in New Zealand. I love big, thick sweaters that are made in other countries because they're usually very well made. I love it. Was it um, an armadillo? It has, no, hedgehogs. It's a hedgehog? Rabbits and hedgehogs. Rabbits and hedgehogs. I so love it. I'm going to list this and sell it for probably, it's a size medium. It's kind of a unisex. It's called Wooly Jumpers. I'm going to list this for probably about 50 bucks. Um, I could sell it fast for 30. I'll keep it up for 50. It'll probably sell at around 40 to $50 in, um, in fourth quarter. Yeah. And keep in mind, guys, when we talk about the prices that we're selling stuff for. Um, you know, it we could be the tortoise and the hare carrot, but I think. I do think that's a hedgehog. Yeah, it doesn't really look like a tortoise. but Yeah, I think it's a hedgehog. Uh we were talking about this. Um, somebody was asking about a, something in the Boss Facebook group, which if you're not in the Boss Facebook group, join the group. Link is in the, in the description. Um, but when we talk about the prices that we price our stuff at, we are more about the slow dime. So we we like to, uh, you know, we like to go for a higher price, but we recognize that it might take a little longer to sell it. Right. And so if you, you need to figure out like what it is that you want to do, um, like how quickly you want to be turning over your inventory, because you might be somebody that you would rather sell it for um, 30 percent less but sell it a lot more quickly mm -hmm. um and so just keep that in mind because like for us we're okay with it taking a few months to sell something yeah um because we're just... constantly listing and selling so i mean i have stuff that i'll sell that's a year old but if i paid three dollars for it and it took a year to sell and i sell it for a hundred i'm quite happy with that as opposed to flipping it in a month for thirty dollars yeah which, and, and that might be the model that works for you. I just personally don't want to have to be constantly sourcing and listing tons of stuff. Cause you gotta think like if you're flipping it faster because you're selling at a lower price point, you're gonna have to source and list more quickly. Um, and I just don't like that. That's just not my way of right. working. I like kind of the slow mm -hmm. pace of things. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, and this is my last thing that I have to show for today. I'm actually a little bit, I didn't have a ton of stuff, but this was really cool. I picked this up for a dollar. It's a, a vintage master's hat. Um, it's, it's not new. It's been worn, but it's got the leather st adjustable strap in the back and it's made in the USA and it's made exclusively for the masters. And some of these hats sell very cheaply, but others sell really high. Um, the ones that sell high are priced really well and are vintage. And I have a feeling I can get $50 or more for this hat. I've seen some of them sell for a couple of hundred. So again, this is another one that I'm going to have to research a little mm -hmm. bit more and make sure I price it in the right lines. I mean, it's definitely an 80s. It's an 80s style. It's made in the USA. It might even be a little earlier, but it's not, it doesn't have a year. So I paid a dollar. It's at least going to be a $50 hat. Don't they have like, aren't there like masters uh, blazers that are green yes. that sell for like yeah. crazy amounts yeah, of they money? Do. Yeah. That's like one thing. Like I don't, I don't buy blazers or sports coats at all, but I always look to see if I see any green ones because I know they sell for like hundreds, if not they do. like a thousand or two. I don't uh, know. No, not thousands, but they do sell hundreds. for a little bit. If you, depends on how old they are. And it depends on, um, you know, who's endorsing it. Cause different masters um, blazers, uh, different decades are endorsed by different uh, mm. 
ones put roper in the title okay thank what is you. what does that, that mean roper it means it has the rope oh because it's got the, the little rope thing yeah ah gotcha i never thought of putting that in the See, title we learn stuff all the time too but thank um, you i will do that yeah. euro extreme i think that's how you say your name uh so i just wanted to say ever since i subscribed to your channel six months ago i've learned so many good tips from you guys well, we really appreciate that, and that's super awesome. But case in point, right here, we just learned something because, like, I yeah. never would have thought. To I've never over. thought. I've never used, uh, known that term before, and I just saw a lot of hats. So, yeah. so there's, cool. I mean, there's like a million details to like kind of soak in. So Nobody ever knows everything about yeah. everything. No. Nope. So I like that. Yep. Um, okay, so well, I got, I'm done. I got a couple more things I can show. Um, so first of all, I was really excited about this. I found this when I was out with uh, Derek. And this is a Fox Racing um, uh, track jacket. And what's cool is it is actually new with tags. Uh, I don't know. Nice. It's a it's 2XL. Um, I don't know um, how much this sold for originally. I'm not entirely sure how much I'm going to sell it for. But I think I should be able to sell it for at least probably like $60. But mm -hmm. I need to look it up and find out what it actually retails at and how much yeah. um, people are selling them for. But how sweet is that? And Karma, yes, I am thinking of getting a local group together. Um, I did have a uh, an official meetup group that I'd gotten together last year, um, briefly after open. I actually only held one um, one gathering, uh, and then life uh, exploded and things yeah. hit the fan. So I stopped doing that. But it has since uh, faded, and I'm definitely going to be doing it again. It's just going to. I, I need a minute. <laughs> I need a minute to actually have some time to put it together and yeah. get the group together. Please uh, keep an eye out for it because I will be posting it in the boss group. We do have an awful lot of local people in the boss group, which is amazing. Well, we should be putting, um, you're going to be like posting something about having a lunch or something when, uh, Lauren's yeah, here when Lorna's week. here, I'm going to try to just put together a, um, a local, uh, you know, come if you want. Yeah. Unofficial lunch that we're going to gather in one day next week. Yeah. And just Karma, I'll let out. you know, message me, so, um, message me to remind me if you don't hear from me, but, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. And hold it in Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix would not be local. <laughs> You're extreme. Phoenix would be a good four hours away from us. So that wouldn't be local, but there is a meetup group in yeah. the Phoenix area. Actually, Teresa, uh, is runs one not too yeah. far outside of the Phoenix area. Um, but once we actually get an official one together, um, you should definitely like join. Whatever. Yeah, the official one and is, is, is definitely so coming. Um, that'll definitely be something I'll do once a month. I've got to figure out a, a date, a time, a place, all that good stuff. Between the two of us traveling, between eBay Open and camp and everything this last month, I, literally we're just, we, we've been back like a week and a half or two weeks and had some time to breathe. So uh, give mm -hmm. me a minute. It'll happen. Yeah. I promise. Yeah, Christian, Kentucky's out of the picture. Yes, Kentucky is out, out of the, the question. question. Yeah, unless you would like to sponsor us to come out there to Kentucky, <laughs> then we can talk. <laughs> okay, so uh, real quick, I went into, I ran into a couple of Ross because I was looking, there's something that I will not reveal what it is, but there's something I've been picking up for her. Um, and so I went and looked at the shoes at one of them. And so I wasn't like doing like a full on retail arbitrage. I just went and like scanned the shoes really quick. Uh, and I did end up getting one pair. Um, and look at how adorable these are, you guys. This is, these are Doc Martens, Dr. Martens. Um, they're actually called, it says Dr. Martin Airwear. And then it says, it also says software, spelled A-I-R. Like, look at how cute these are. But they're like adorable little um, wingtip shoes. They are cute. They're super cute. Um, I paid thirty dollars for them, but I should be able to uh, sell them for eighty to a hundred. So they're just the cutest little things ever. Um, they have there's there's some other ones listed on. You would wear those if they were in your size. I would. They're size eight, so they might fit me, but I'd rather make money. Um, and so the ones that I saw listed, most of them didn't have the black. It was, it's like white or like a lighter color sole. And I think the black is like way cooler looking. Mm -hmm. No, and they're so not the made in any. England ones. Mm -hmm. um, if they were, they'd go for a little bit more. Yeah. But, uh, but I think they're adorbs. I think they're pretty awesome. They're cute. I love Doc Martens. All right. That's all I have for uh, stuff. I don't even know what time it is. It's after three. So it is. It's after Are there three. any other questions? Any other pressing questions? Any other? Yeah. Come okay. to Buffalo. Nobody wants to go to Buffalo. No, we have kidding. mighty. We have mighty taco. Seriously, all I know is that someday, if we ever do do any traveling for um, doing our show or anything like that, 
tacos at each location is definitely going to have to happen. Mm -hmm. So be thinking about what tacos you would take me to go get if I, if we came to your town. Tacos like are taco not good everywhere. But some places, that's why I'm like, they need to do the research. They need to go find out where the best tacos are. And then I will eat the tacos. So that's how we're going to base a tour on, on tacos. Maybe the taco tour of America. Yes, pretty much. Katie and Vicky. Mm -hmm. do and if you don't have good tacos, then learn to make them and make us some tacos. <laughs> There you go, right? See, Trish, tacos are bad there. You're right, Trish. Yeah. Trish is in Massachusetts. Tacos are not good in Massachusetts. There are a few places in Rhode Island that are eh, okay, but it's the Puerto Rican side of the tacos yeah. as opposed to the Mexican side of the tacos because, you know, East Coast is definitely heavy Puerto Rican influence. Yeah. So there are some really great Puerto Rican restaurants. So I grew up in Oregon. Uh, and so, you know, it's, I grew up in a big, huge farming community. Um, and so there are a lot of Christian Kentucky is not known for its tacos. <laughs> Probably not. So we have like, we have a huge, huge, uh, like Mexican American population, um, in Oregon. And so there's lots and lots of like really good Mexican food, um, and lots of amazing taquerias and taco trucks. And so, uh, it seriously halibut tacos <laughs> Ew. inappropriate Ew. anyway. Uh, so Mexican food is like my hands down, like my favorite kind of food. And I went to grad school in New York City, lived in Brooklyn. And I tell you, I only lived there for a couple of years. And the fact that they have overall terrible Mexican food in um, New York it definitely was a big factor to whether or not I would be willing to live there long term. Um, I don't think terrible Mexican. New York has uh, so many amazing cultural influences. I think, you had a, I think you just found a, you didn't get to find a good taco place. So what you're saying, I didn't look hard enough. I'm, let me tell I'm you. Let me maybe tell you. you needed to know a little bit. Now, now, I'm sure that there there were some good. There was like one good place that I went to. It was a little bit more spendy. There were some other like kind of Spanish influenced places, but they had. There were a lot of taquerias there. Disgusting tacos. All right. Uh, they and and the other thing is like burritos don't even exist there. Like even the taquerias and the taco trucks. I think that they I'm going to have there, to get tacos for, no burritos. for dinner tonight. Now that so, we're talking exactly about right. So every time I would come home from school, I would basically go on a burrito taco tour of uh, Oregon mm -hmm. and just like stuff as many burritos in my mouth as possible. But I see. So yeah, tacos. Uh, I'm, I'm all about, I like tacos too. Tacos and sushi are my two favorite foods. So uh, someone just said, I love sushi is my favorite. So I'm good with either one of those. Um, New York has terrible Mexican food. It's like Taco Bell, nasty. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Because here's the thing is that here and like uh, in Oregon and stuff like that, like all the Mexican places and taquerias, a lot of them are run by people who actually know how to make the food because they mm -hmm. are Mexican and they grew up well, eating actually, the food. I actually, Allison's talking about halibut tacos are excellent. I, I actually really love fish tacos when they're done well. Yeah. Um, I can't stand tilapia. So tilapia is disgusting and unhealthy and I hate everything about it and there's no way of eating fish tacos if they're made out of tilapia but yeah. halibut cod just white flaky fish in general yes uh, Katie is not part Mexican neither am I but we both love good Mexican food but I'm telling um, you in New York this is the crazy thing in New York in Manhattan there are quite a few taquerias but the crazy thing there is that all the ones because <gasps> I probably went to like a handful of them and they were all uh they were all run by like Korean families. And so they would have um, like, you could get noodles and you could get tacos, but the tacos were so gross. Like they just, they tasted, they weren't street tacos. They tasted nothing like what we have. Um, but yeah. yeah, what's going on? What are you gasping I, about? Cindy does not like tacos. I think Cindy, <gasps> Cindy, she's like, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's Deb, Deb, not Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Sorry, uh, Cindy. Deb, Deb. Deb Smith. <gasps> I may be kicked out of the group because I don't eat tacos. Listen, Hard or soft shell, it really depends on how they're made. Uh, real uh, fresh made corn flour tortillas that are made in front of you at the at like Taco Me Taco, the place that we like here. Those are really good. I prefer flour for the most part, but like unless it's a street taco. Yeah, I, when I was a little kid, like my favorite dinner that my mom would make was burritos. And then it's like, it was so it was like the really yummy flour tortilla and she would put oil on it and like heat it up in, in the pan. And it was so good. And all I would put in it is beans and cheese. That's like all I wanted. Um, and so I, I do love like flour tortillas, especially like I really like good, like, but I don't like ones. the hard ones. But like when it fresh. comes to a street taco, it's like, you just have to have those little corn tortillas. It's like they double them up and they're just like, so, 
So yeah, tilapia is bad. It is. It's just like this weird genetically modified, disgusting fish and, but it's cheap. So a lot of people yeah. use it in restaurants and ugh, not for me. Yeah. Anyway, San Diego, good taco. San Diego has some of the best fish tacos ever, uh, you know, home of the Wahoo taco chain, um, and yeah. which actually we have Wahoo tacos here and their, their fish tacos are actually really good. Mm -hmm. Although so, now it's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to go anywhere, but taco, we taco for tacos because they're so stinking good. They have like the pork. So I get the pastor is my favorite. So they have it up on like one of those, those spits that like it's we've been spending two, it's 10 minutes. We've been talking about tacos. I've got at least another 30 minutes of material here. So just shut it down. Okay. They have the pork. It spins and it's like sizzling as it spins. Cause it's like going by the heat source. Right. And this guy just takes this big, huge knife. And he's got like his little the tortillas in his hand and he's just like sawing the meat right on there. And it's like, it's good. Yeah. So Deb, I don't know what your problem is. Um, maybe you Allison. just haven't had good tacos. She says, my mom is Scottish. Best thing she made for dinner was reservations. <laughs> yeah. My, we're French. We're Canadian French. And my family is not known for its cooking yeah. or culinary skills whatsoever. My mother is the worst cook I've ever met in my life. I love you, mom, but yeah. you're terrible. She's yeah. horrible. See, my, my family. I'm a good cook. But yeah, my mom's a terrible I cook. I did not too. learn it from home. Here's the thing. Maybe the reason my favorite meal was burritos is because all she had to do was buy a package of tortillas and basically heat up a can of beans and mm -hmm. put some cheese on top. So it's like there was yeah. nothing, there was nothing for her to mess up. But like my mom likes to experiment when she cooks. And but yes, she does it's it. called Al Pastor. That's what we yeah, she Al Pastor. Yes. Pastor. Uh, but she um she doesn't have the instincts to experiment. So she does really weird stuff. And so like one time she made enchiladas and I went to eat the enchiladas and they started crunching. And I'm like, what in the name of all of this holy in this world is going on? She had put water chestnuts oh in enchiladas, God. you guys. Oh my God. That's I like that. My mother would do that. I like some water chestnuts. Okay. Mm -mm. But not in my enchiladas. No, that's weird. That's that's freaking weird. Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, and Macayos. Yeah, I've been to Macayos. Somebody said that that had great Mexican food when I first moved here. I, yeah. I, mm -mm. Wrong. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's gross. We have this. There's this really awesome, like more a little. I don't even know if you call it upscale. It's just a Mex sit down Mexican restaurant, which I love those as well as like a taco truck or whatever. Sit down Mexican restaurant here. I don't think the food is that great, but they do table side guacamole where uh, they could basically come out and they have, mm -hmm. they, they yeah. take like three Lindo, avocados. Uh, Lindo Mishuakin yeah. on the hill. I, I'm place. always a little bit disappointed in the food. And so I'm like, we don't even bother to order the food anymore because it's like, you can just get the table side it's okay. guacamole and you get like a big bowl. And it, it, all it is is fresh avocado. And then they put like a ton of cilantro and onions and yeah. like jalapenos and it's off. Maybe we should go get that this time. Oh, see now I'm talking about that. <laughs> and yeah, the, uh, David, there are tons of great taco places in Vegas. Tons, 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 tons. Um, yeah. yeah I, I mean, there are some disappointing places, but then there are, you know, some really good places. Mm -hmm. So no shortage of good Mexican food here. We're a little close to the border. So yeah. 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 Homemade right. flour tortillas are the best, mm -hmm. the best. And that's why I really like the, uh, we go to um, Roberto's. And they, their burritos are amazing because they put them in like those handmade uh, flour tortillas. I don't know. How did we go from an eBay channel oh. to a food channel? Because mm. somebody started talking mm. about tacos and mm. this is what happens. This is what happens. I There's a reason why my um, Instagram says that I am a taco enthusiast mm -hmm. because I am. I the love boss me. food book. Food I love me some tacos. Food book show for mm. sure. Mm, 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 mm. We even took you, I think, didn't we take you with my sister to go get uh Mexican food we when did. you were in Oregon, the, the one place time. where you or you you order the flour tortillas and they're like the handmade kind. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, so where, it's where I met Binky. Yep. We went to lunch. Yep. Anywho, whatever. Well, now that we, we've kept you here for 15 minutes talking about tacos. I still have 25 minutes left to go of my tacos. Taco, taco talk. You need to have a separate show. Talking tacos. Your, your taco dissertation. Yep. I think so. Taco talk. Taco talk. Talking tacos. We're to, hey guys, we're talking tacos. You're ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, now I have to go eat some guacamole. Taco flipper. <laughs> <laughs> Should change our names. Uh, All right. Thanks for sticking with us through the craziness. We still yeah, have 109 yeah, yeah. people. We did not lose you all at the guys, Taco Guys, we only have 29 thumbs up. Yeah, what's up with that? 109 Come people on. watching and 29 thumbs up. Give you us people, some thumbs up. You people stink at the thumbs up. Okay, now you're getting a little aggressive. <laughs> 
I think that's a little rude. <laughs> they're going to give us thumbs up. Now they're going to be like, we're going to start seeing like the thumbs down counting up because you just like yelled at our Adrian. <laughs> now I'm hungry. I'm ordering Dickie's barbecue. How do you get Dickie's barbecue out of Taco Talk? <laughs> I don't understand. Maybe, maybe Adrian's another one of those non taco lovers like, <gasps> like Deb Smith. Ugh. Deb Smith. That's like a dirty word now. Deb Smith. <laughs> she doesn't like tacos. That's about oh, how I felt when she told me she didn't like ice cream. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You don't like ice cream? But she's I like, like well, mustard. She's like, well, I do like it. some ice cream. Vanilla. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're a weirdo. I am a weirdo. Sorry. No ice cream. Deb no likes tacos. Barbecue. Okay, well, that's okay. All right. But you, come on, slightly tacos. redeemed. Tacos? Come on. Anyway. All right. Anyway, guys. Uh, so like I said, join the boss Facebook group. The link is down below. Um, I also added the last uh, show we had, I had talked about uh, wrapping shoes with the saran wrap things, uh, this stuff right here. So I actually went through and I got links to like a lot of the um, different things that we use, like labels and this kind of stuff and bubble wrap. And so I have, I've actually added affiliate links um, down below. So that's going to be in the description of all of our videos. So if you ever want to know like, you know, what camera I use when I do pre recorded stuff, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I would try to add that in there so you guys we'll can check it out. We'll put a link for the camera that I use for uh, photos as well. If anybody uh, wants to know, there's a, a certain types of cameras that are not a million dollars that have a square setting ratio. If you don't want to mm -hmm. use your phone to take pictures, um, when I have Dana here taking pictures, she uses my camera. I use my phone. We kind of go back and forth, and they both do work well. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, so give us a thumbs up. See. That's that one person. There's one person give a thumbs down. It's because you yelled at them. Probably. I apologize. You are abusive. I and that's shame. what happens. I feel that's shame. what happens. You put good out in the world. Good comes back. You put bad out. You start getting thumbs down in your videos. That's what happens. Sorry. <sighs> Guys, I don't know. I don't know. But hey, tomorrow's Monday. We don't normally do shows on Mondays, but we are going to be guests on uh, Wade's Ventures channel. So oh, Wade right. from Wade's like, Ventures, show tomorrow? six o'clock Pacific Standard Time tomorrow night. We're going to be over on Wade's channel. I will uh, put a link up in the Boss Facebook group tomorrow. Um, but if you don't already subscribe to Wade's channel, go ahead and do that, and then you'll know when we go on. We're going to be doing a live show with him. Mm -hmm. um, so you should totally come and hang out with us. Uh, we're working on getting the market more um, overly saturated with our faces. Um, so heck, we're just going to do a show every day, right? No. <laughs> Not every day. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us uh, on your Sunday afternoon. And we will see you soon. Get to listing. Go have some tacos. Make some guacamole. And boss make some up. some decisions. Whatever. Have boss fun. up and eat some stinking tacos, guys. Bye.